and if they go on to win, it will kill our Frankfurt season before the halfway mark. It's the Claymore's at the Galaxy, and it's on Sky Sports. <laughs> Tonight, it's simple for Frankfurt. They must win. As perverse as this sounds, their huge crowds do not actually translate into a significant advantage at the Vol Stadium. In fact, the large crowds and fanatical supporters even worked against the Galaxy, who have an all-time home record of 20 and 21. There's a pressure to perform that no other team in the league faces to such a high degree. My partner in crime, as always, is Mike Carlson. Mike, this game intrigues me. Claymore's have finally found offense, but the Galaxy are desperate for a win. Speaking about pressure to perform, <laughs> they really are. You know, if they go 0-4, they can forget about getting to the World Bowl. But if, from the Claymore's point of view, what worries me about the Galaxy is that they stopped Scotland's offense cold the first time they met, and they've got Andy McCullough back, which means their offense might be able to get un unstuck. For the Claymore's, my observation, they played much more like a team last week, but their offense finally got it together. It looked like that getting it together is exactly the right word because it looked like everybody was on the same page for the first time all season and a lot of the complicated things they've been working on seemed to work and they got the ball outside inside it all worked okay mike thanks for that here is what maestro mike thinks of the keys to tonight's game michael bishop is the hound's worst nightmare in week one he ran the league's best pair of defensive ends around in circles and the longer bishop prances around the more time his receivers can do the same thing to the claymore secondary and remember frankfurt scored 21 points on the scots without andy mccullough the two keys to stopping bishop are first keep him in the pocket he's not a precision passer when he's forced to set and throw and second, keep his receivers covered and make him beat you with his feet, not his arm. Because once he's in the open field, mistakes can happen. And last week, Amsterdam's Matt Sweeney turned one Bishop mistake into the points that sent Frankfurt to their third straight loss. Scotland's offense finally got into gear in the second half last week behind the bruising running of Anthony Gray. Gray's 53-yard burst set up a score and helped open things up for the passing game as well. But don't get caught from behind. And in the passing game, Dante Hall showed his game-breaking skills comparable to Michael Bishop's. The Claymores got Hall the ball in the middle of the field, and given that much room, two touchdowns was the result. Both coming from hard-earned yards gained after the catch. Watch Hall break two tackles on his way to the winning touchdown. Makes it look easy. The celebrations begin. And Clint Sterner says, what's the secret, Dante? Dante says, Clint, you keep throwing, I'll keep scoring. I love you, man. We'll look for more of that this week. And as we look at the standings after three weeks, we see that Barcelona is on top of their coach, Jack Bicno, three away from the NFL Europe best 50 career win, World Bowl champions. Ryan Fire on a two-game losing streak, have not lost three straight since 1997. Today, they're at Berlin. Going back to our game, Mike, last week the Claymores had 375 yards on total offense. What impressed you most, the passing game, running game? Well, the passing game, really, because they finally got it untracked, and they did it by getting Dante Hall the ball in the middle of the field, getting James Whalen the ball on the outside of the field. It helped that their running game did start to click, and that one big run by Anthony Gray really made a difference because he was doing it all by himself because Vaughn Sanders got hurt. How does the Galaxy's quarterback, Michael Bishop, who I really like, complicate an opponent's defensive game plan? Well, basically, you can't plan for him because he's all all over the field. He's got the greatest escape skills I've seen in a long time. And that means that the more time he takes running around, the harder it is for your defensive backs to cover the guys that they're supposed to be covering. And in the case of Andy McCullough, who's back, that could be a real problem because McCullough is big and he's fast. So if, they, if Bishop doesn't get the ball right away, McCullough is going to get open, then get the ball, and he's going to be a problem for one player to cover. One guy who could be a key because of Bishop scrambling, 
Robert Flickinger leads the Claymores with three sacks. Are you surprised that he's the, the leader of the Hounds? Well, it, statistically, yeah. Um, Flick's problem is basically that he's small for a defensive end, and mm -hmm. the three-man front, front, that's hard if they run at you. But he's got great quickness, and that can really help against Dante Hall because the important thing is to keep him inside, not let him get around you where he'll have running room. Okay, thanks a lot. Now, the Claymores. 8 and 5 overall against Frankfurt. Time now to get over to the Vol Stadium. Your Fox commentators are future Hall of Famer Chris Carter and our own Nick Hallin. And congratulations to Nick because he's calling his 100th game. They're on the way. Tall with a big, deep kick. Fielded at the three yard line by Hall. And Hall's looking to turn the corner and he gets to the 30 yard line before he's dragged down. So let's take a look at the Scottish Claymore's offense, led by Clint Sterner, who had a couple of quiet weeks, then came alive last week with a three-touchdown performance, the man from the Dallas Cowboys. The line, Nivens, Mack, Humphrey, King, and Big Jim Stull at right tackle. And the starting receivers, Scott Cooper and Dante Hall, the two tight ends, James Whalen and Randy Palmer. Anthony Gray from the Philadelphia Eagles gets the start in the backfield. He'll share time with Vaughn Sanders. So the ball at the 31. Three wide receivers on first down play. Action on first down as well. And Sterner has a lot of time but can't find a man. Todd McMillan was there to break up the ball intended for Dante Hall. Let's take a look at the Frankfurt defense. And they've been banged up up front. They lost two guys. Spicer, Greer, Johnson and Coley at the starting ball. Spicer and Greer are playing hurt. The linebackers are still the pass rush. Gunther and Moses and in the secondary Corey Walker gets the start, Terrence Pass is injured Tony George, Corey Gaines and Todd McMillan A lot of questions for Corey Walker to answer today Gerald Williams is the motion man on second and ten and they go on the ground, not much happening, maybe a yard, that's just about it the Scottish Claymores, and that's going to be third and long. Vaughan Sanders ran into a brick wall. Well, I'm surprised to see Sanders in there. We weren't expecting him to play that much, but to see a little bit of action. But sometimes on game day, you come out, the crowd, the adrenaline, you feel a little bit better, and the coach is going to give you that leeway to let you go. If you are a starter, he's going to let you go if you're feeling good. Sanders injured an ankle. You might have seen that last week if you're watching the Claymores game last week. Seems to be okay now. No gain on the play, though. Third down and ten. And Sterner will go from the shotgun. The pressure comes from Dwight Johnson. He's got a man. It's James Whalen, the go-to guy. 14 yards, first down, Scotland. Whalen, I like his ability. I mean, he has the ability to not only be an H-back out of the backfield, but also he can split out wide. There's a number of things the Dallas Cowboys are very excited. You see right here, we're going to move him out wide. He's going to run like an option route. He gets it beyond the, beyond the first down depth and come back and catch the football. It's a great play for Scotland to start out to get that first third down conversion going to the receiver who has the best hand. Well, when the chips are down for the Claymores, Whalen is the guy they look to, that's for sure. And you can see why. 14 yards. First down, Scotland at the 44. Back on the ground they go. Vaughan Sanders tries to move a load and uh, has a little bit of trouble with Paul Spicer there, the big defensive tackle in on the stop. Yeah, Spicer's going to be in. He's going to be in on a lot of plays, but after talking with Jay Humphrey, the center for Scotland, they said they're going to try to run a lot of misdirection plays. Try to get Frankfurt's defense moving one way and counter run a, a counter, a misdirection play to kind of pull them and take advantage of the speed that Frankfurt had on their defense. A couple of Sanders. Paul left, Williams right. Whalen line up in the backfield. Now going in motion. Sterner will throw, and he looks for his favorite receiver once again, Whalen, with his second catch. Eric Gunn for the uh, middle linebacker was there on the stop. Just a couple this time, but interesting to see they get Whalen involved very early today. Yes, Whalen and Sterner, they already have a rapport that they developed. Both of them were on Dallas' squad last season. So when you come over here to NFL Europe, you have two players and two of their better players on offense, if not the two best players. It's just going to be easy to be able to play pass and catch. They're just trying to, I like what they're doing so far. They're throwing some high percentage throws to give Sterner some confidence in his ability. But they've got another tricky third down to negotiate here. This one third and seven. 
I'll go the other way to Joe Williams, who can't quite bring it in. They were looking for that isolation with Corey Walker, and they got it, but Williams couldn't quite bring it in, so the punting unit comes on for Scotland. That's the kind of play, though, you want to make it a receiver. Sterner makes a good throw, a good throw to the outside, which is one of the tougher throws for the quarterback to be able to make. He puts it in the vicinity of the receiver, and you want your receiver, in that case, to be able to come up with a great catch. Brad Costello is in to punt. And the kick is on its way, and uh, Damon Savage is not going to get a look at that because it takes a bounce at the 20 yard line. Frankfurt Galaxy offense taking the field, and uh, Andy McCullough, the wide receiver, is in the lineup as well. Just three catches on the year so far. You think they're going to want to get this fella involved more in this offense? And they'll start off on the ground, and not a whole lot doing there for Rashon Spice. The tackle there, Antonio Dingle, that's a mismatch. The offensive unit for the Frankfurt Galaxy, led by Michael Bishop from the New England Patriots, who frightened the life out of Scotland in week one. The line, Rawlings, Brown, Thomas Tucker and Nelson, the strong on the left. And Ricky Hall and Andy McCullough get the start. A wide receiver, Cloud and Manns in the backfield, and the tight end, Rod Monroe. Second out and six. Motion from Monroe. Back on the ground they go. Mans manages to spin away from one tackle and then is stopped after the gain of a couple. Dusty Renfro in on the stop. Chris Ward was there too. One of the big three on the defensive line. Chris Ward for the Scottish Claymores. They're all returning veterans. Threats, Antonio Dingle and Chris Ward. The linebackers, Dunlap and Brooks on the outside, have good speed. Renfro and Miller inside. And in the secondary, Central McClellan, Eric Whitfield, Earl Riley, and Nate Terry gets the start for Brian Gray, who's out with a concussion. On third down, the pass to McCullough. They got him involved early, and McCullough is brought down by Nate Terry, but that is exactly what Doug Graber said he wanted to do today. All right, that's what they have to be able to do, because he's an explosive player. He started out training camp with a little injury to his ankle, but if you remember some of the stats from 99, I mean, tremendous three touchdowns in World Bowl 99, the MVP of that game. He's been to a couple NFL teams. Arizona Cardinals, um, also Tennessee Titans, and nice with the with the LA Raiders or the Oakland Raiders, wherever they're, wherever they're playing this year. Wherever it is this week, yeah. <laughs> First down at the 36 after the completion by McCullough. And play action. And Bishop looking to line it up in the direction of Ricky Hall. All kinds of contact there. Hall tangled up with McClellan. The flags came in. Central McClellan with his hands on his hips to say, wasn't me, but I think the officials might take a different view. I think they caught him on that one. It's a great play action fake. It's a great, I like the, the theory of what they're trying to do. They come out trying to run the ball. They get Andy involved. 29 defense. Automatic first down. It's Pete Morelli, our official. They're playing a zone defense. Anytime you play zone with Michael Bishop, he's going to try to take advantage of the matchup outside. With the receiver, it's going to be one-on-one -on -one outside. He puts the ball up and gives the receiver an opportunity. Let's go, let's go, let's go, get out. That time, Central, they called it. That's a matchup that produced a big touchdown in week one for Frankfurt. Manns gets the carry. Manns tries to cut back and take defenders with him. And a good second effort will give Denvis Manns eight yards. Eric Whitfield on the stop. Manns allocated here from the Cowboys. Played his college football at New Mexico State. Only five foot eight as well. You wouldn't believe it on this play. I mean, Dusty Renfro, I believe he's going to be a play a big part in this game, but he shoots the gap and misses the tackle. Anytime the linebacker shoots the gap and misses the tackle, it's going to put a strain on the middle of the defense, and you're going to be able to pick up seven or eight yards. They'll give him seven, second down and three. Mans once again finds himself a hole, picks up first down yardage, another six yards. Keith Miller, the run-stopping linebacker on the stop, but Denvis Mans finding good yardage on the ground. Now, with them being able to run the ball, one of the keys to the game initially was going to make Frankfurt's offense one-sided as far as give them the run or give them the pass. Don't give them both because in these type of situations, Michael Bishop is at his best because he can play action fake, he can run around and make things happen. Kevin McLeod, the big fullback, gets the short yardage load. He'll pick up another four. London Dunlap and Keith Miller on the stop. But uh, Frankfurt offensively moving pretty smoothly on this first series. Yes, they are, but they're mixing it up. Now they're getting a fullback, a chance for McLeod. The Bills slamming up into the line of scrimmage, pick up the first down, give the offensive line an opportunity to come off the ball early in the game. So it's important. 
Back on the ground. McLeod gets to the five-yard line. That's where he's tackled. Dingle was in on that. Here we go. Naked normally is the terminology used by a quarterback to the mean they're going to fake the ball one way and the quarterback's going to roll the opposite way by himself. There it is. There's the roll. And he's in trouble. Gets some pressure from Miller now. Gets away. Looks in the end. Oh, it was broken up by Earl Riley, the safety man, who got up there and just managed to bat it away. But McCullough was in the end zone and it would have been six had Riley not lifted one of his fingers. Yes, he makes a good play by because McCullough was up in the back of the end zone. But one thing that Bishop has to realize, too, that if you're starting out the game, you don't want to cause a turnover. Don't throw the ball but defenders can get their hands on it. He had nothing there or a spectacular play. Sometimes you're better off throwing it out of the back of the end zone to protect your field goal opportunity. So Stefan Bauer, the German, will attempt a chip shot, a 22-yard field goal. They've had problems with special teams, but not with that one. And so the guy who normally just gets extra point for the Frankfurt Galaxy gives his team the lead. An impressive offensive drive culminates in three points for Doug Graber's side. They're three nothing up. I've by the Galaxy, but do you, does it look to you that maybe the Claymore spent too much time just worrying about Michael Bishop? You know, it's possible because they're doing a lot of shooting the linebackers, and as we saw a couple of times, Dusty Renfro misses a tackle shooting through. It gives the running back time to get through, but they're also shooting the, the linebackers to try to get Michael Bishop to commit mm -hmm. one way or another, and we can take a look at that. If you look at the picture, that's Keith Miller, the linebacker, who's circled there. Now watch the way he's going to shoot the gap and he'll be right in front of Michael Bishop, right in his face, right after the snap. Here he comes, and watch what Bishop does to him. Whoops, <laughs> and he can just stop and start so quickly, and this is where it's so dangerous, because Andy McCullough's open right now, and if Bishop gets rid of the ball more quickly, it's a touchdown. Okay, good observation, Mike. Well, things turned against the Claymores after that first Frankfurt score as Dante Hall coughed up the ball on the following kickoff. Ola Kimrin took advantage for the Galaxy on this 39-yard effort, and that was all the scoring for the first period. We pick it up with Scotland's first possession of the second quarter. This time, they go straight over the middle and find Stephen Fontana, the third string tight end for seven yards, but uh, Frankfurt on special teams recovered a fumble last time out, and Blaine Jenkins loved it. A little more pass, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no more coffee for him. <laughs> Second down and three. Back on the ground they go. They get close to first down yardage with Vaughn Sanders. Eric Gunther, the middle linebacker, on the stop, but they will move the chains. Sanders certainly showing no ill effects from uh, that ankle injury that he sustained last week. And Eric Gunther, a, a young man that I know you like a lot. Yes, I mean, very, very smart football player. After spending some time with him in the hotel, uh, directing traffic. Uh, I like his mannerisms on the football. Very, very quiet off the field, but a maniac on the field. And you need those type of players. First down for Scotland at their own 30 yard line. Whalen shifting around in the backfield. And they've got it. Whalen wide open, and Whalen can't get past the tackler. A great job done by Kelvin Moses that limits it to just a five-yard gain, and Gene Dahlquist faces a second and five. I like what they're doing here. See, because they're moving him around. Whalen's probably the best all-round football player on the offense. They fake as if he's going to block the defensive end, slip him, in, slip him into the backfield. This is one of their favorite pass plays. Anytime in a pinch, they're going to run him what they call a flood pattern. They're going to run three receivers to one side and try to flood the defense. Whalen in the slot. Scott Cooper, top of the screen. Corey Allen in the ball game, and that's where they're going. 
And Corey Allen makes the catch. There is a flag. There was contact with Todd McMillan, but Corey Allen only activated this week by the Scottish Claymores. A man allocated here from the Washington Redskins had a real bad finger injury, and they say they're going to just work him into this offense gradually. They're going to try to. They're going to try to. If you see Todd McMillan here, he really breaks on this football. And it's a good call by the referee, but also it's a good call by the defender. He reads the play. It's a three-step drop where the quarterback's going to drop back three steps. And once he stops, the defender is going to stop. And he breaks in there. Very, very quick Passing athlete. Number 31 in the defense. Penalty is the line. First down. But that's the type of penalty as a coach you're not upset with because he recognized what they were trying to do, and he took the guts to try to break on it. Doug Gray, the head coach, also coaches the secondary here. Frankfurt. He was a secondary coach for the Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs back in the 80s. Then went on to be head coach at the uh, at Rutgers. First down at their own 41 for the Claymores. There's Whalen shifting in the backfield. Vaughan Sanders gets the carry. Sanders tries to work the block of Whalen and will pick up four yards before he's stopped by a bunch of Galaxy defenders. Gary Stills was there. And again, Sanders is shaken up, just like last week, and this is not good news for the Scottish Claymores. Well, he's getting up slow. I mean, he comes into the game with a little injury. And any time you have that adrenaline flowing, once you get into the ball game, some of that adrenaline begins to wear off, and you get caught in a big pile. Someone twists your knee, or someone falls on your ankle, and then it becomes even worse than it was before. That could be that ankle again. Chris will uh, try and get an update on Vaughan Sanders if we can, but Anthony Gray will check in. And Gray had to carry the load last week. He may have to do it again this week as well. Second down, Stern will throw. Pump fakes, has a wide open man straight down the middle. Big Stephen Fontana working Corey Gaines, and Fontana the third tight end on the depth chart, but a guy that they seem to be going to more and more as the season progresses. Yeah, what they're trying to do, they're trying they're trying to get him more involved. He's right here on the end of the line of scrimmage, the tight end. He's going to have one-on-one -on -one coverage. Sterner does a great job of pumping to get the defenders to move to the left, and he runs right through the coverage down the middle. Even with a better throw or a little bit better route, he might have scored on that play. To the Galaxy 32-yard line, first down Scotland. Gray alone in the backfield, Cooper to the left, that's where they go, Cooper with the catch, the veteran Glaswegian shows his smarts, he's been in the league seven years, Scott Cooper, no one has played more games in NFL Europe, and I know you love him because he came up to you in pre-game and asked to have his photograph taken with you, <laughs> well, you should want to have your photograph taken with him, I told him, I want his autograph, <laughs> and he wouldn't give it to you, would he? Yeah, he didn't, but see, I've had the guts to announce I'm going to retire after this year, he doesn't have the guts to say he's going to quit, yeah, he, he, just, he hints, doesn't he, he says, yeah, yeah, I might, I might not, he's I think that's what he's saying. I can't understand that Glaswegian accent of his too well. <laughs> Second down and three after seven yard completion to Cooper. On the ground, Anthony Gray finds a big hole and Gray just takes defenders with him all the way down to the 15 yard line. A 10 yard gain for Gray Stills was on the stop. When this fella builds up ahead of the steam, he takes some stopping. Yeah, see, I love the mixture between Anthony Gray and Von Sanders. If you look at last week's game, he had 10 rushes for 81 yards, the leading ball carrier in that game. And then the first game of the season, he had 51 yards against Frankfurt defense. So Frankfurt is used to seeing him run the football and at Scotland, they would love to build a mix the two of them but right now you're going to see a steady dose of anthony gray four left cooper right gray and whalen in the backfield first down on the 15 back on the ground anthony gray again manages to break through he'll get four yards before he's stopped by dwight johnson and Calvin moses and gene darkwist is also wide for sound let's hear him Let's go. go. We're going hard two, hard two. Y'all hang in there with me. All right, hang in there. Go, Jack Wright. 98 gas and a hard two, hard two. Ready? Hang in there. Hang in, hang in. Yo, Jack Wright, 98 dash. What they're going to try to do is go a hard snap count. He's going to bob his head at first, and they're going to be off the right side. Back, 88, hot, hot. There it is on the ground. Gray runs into a bunch of trouble. Richard Seals was the first man there. Of course, Gray inside. They'll get. They'll give him a yard and no more. 
third down around five. But it's a good play on second down. You give Anthony Gray an opportunity to get to the game and get a feel for the game. And also, instead of trying to throw a pass and make it third and long, you move it down two yards closer so you make it third and medium. And the chances of picking up third and medium are a lot better because Scotland has struggled throughout the season trying to pick up first downs. Here's another one of those red zone matchups. As you can see, both teams struggling in this position, so something's got to give here, too. Third down and five. Stern looks, looks, can't find a man now. Will take off on his own, perhaps. No, still can't pull the trigger. Now he does. End zone touchdown. James Whalen. A flag comes in late. Stern with time and poise. But will it stand up? Time to Clint Stoner have there, Chris. A quarterback can, that can run can make a bad pass protection into a great play by utilizing his feet. A couple pump fakes, moving the pocket outside. Still, we wait. Anxious moments this for the Claymores. And Rob Hart, the play skipper, has come on and then starts to walk off, and that's why. So the Galaxy got a big break. Anytime the quarterback is scrambling in the red zone, especially inside the 10-yard line, the receivers that are running the route, sometimes they lose a concept as far as where they are on the field, and they'll get a tendency maybe to step on the white line and not, and not realize it. If they have done that, then they cannot be the first one to touch the football when they come back inbound. Number 87 of the receiver stepped out of bounds and came in and touched the pass, making it an incomplete pass, fourth down. Mr. Whalen, he's right here. For one, is he should never be closer than two yards to, to the um, out-of-bounds marker on the sideline or in the back of the end zone because two yards gives you the opportunity to still have a little room in case someone draws contact with you, you can still maneuver and stay in back. Rob Hart is back on. He will attempt a 28-yard field goal to cut the deficit in half. The kick is on its way, and it's good. It, good could, have been, for it could have been more for Scotland, but I think Gene Darquist will be very happy that his offense has finally started to get on track. It's a field goal battle here in Frankfurt. Claymore's had to settle for a field goal. They trail now 6-3. Tough losing that touchdown, but Anthony Gray seems to be coming around. You know, Anthony Gray seems to see the hole better than Sanders does. Sanders has the speed through it, but Gray sees where the holes are, and he gets a more yardage that way. And with James Whalen, it was actually a good call because that rule is designed to stop guys from sneaking out of bounds. And sometimes we see it happen inadvertently, and it was inadvertently in, in Whalen's case. But he was alone, and he tried to make himself more alone by going out of bounds. So it was actually probably the right call. Okay, thanks for that, Mike. We'll pick up the the action on Frank first ensuing drive. They have just called a timeout and are deep in Claymore's territory. Go! Blue lady! Blue lady! Hunt. There is the fake. Straight down the field. Broken up. Central McClellan was there defensively for the Scottish Claymores. They were looking again for Ricky Hall. The one thing I didn't like about that play is, for one, they had a timeout. Now, how can you rush out of a timeout? You can hear it in Bishop's voice as far as him being tired, and that's something that, that fans don't understand and other players don't understand. When you're a running quarterback, you have to be in great shape because you get fatigued. Plus, it's very hot out there still as well. Now the sun's starting to go behind the uh, stands here. Back on the ground. Man straight up the middle. Man's with his elusiveness once again getting inside the 10 to the 6-yard line. First down, Renard pops on the stop. But if they don't find a way of shutting down this Galaxy running game, the Claymores are in trouble. Well, if they don't tackle better, miss tackles, miss tackles, miss tackles. You can see him getting into the secondary. As you can see right there, Reggie Hunt misses him. He's the first one that has the opportunity. He misses him about eight yards down the field, allowing him to get the ball inside the 10-yard line. So here's the Galaxy in the red zone. Mans gets nothing, and they've 
struggle. We've already talked about this. They struggled in the red zone all year long offensively, the Galaxy. I think they've become very, very predictable in red zone. Uh, predominantly run on first down. And sometimes you have to be able to look at your own self or what they call self scouting in the NFL. Look at the things you do and, want, and do the direct opposite of things you have done in the previous three or four games. Look at that number. Nearly 100 yards given up on the ground already. Oh. We're not even at half time. Second and goal. Bishop will throw. Has a lot of time. Has a man. Mark Sue and a Frenchman goes in again. The man from Paris. Touchdown Frankfurt. His second of the year. the crowd in the game. Now here's one of the players who I probably enjoy talking to more so than any other player because he has such a genuine appreciation for the game. Here's Dante Hall, the return man, who's already coughed up a fumble. Tal kicks off from his own 30, a high spinning kick, fielded at the 14. And Hall manages to turn one corner and then is tripped up by his own man at the 33 yard line. He thought he had something special there, Hall, and then just ran into a bit of trouble. But uh, the pressure starting to build on this Scotland offense now. 10 points adrift with just over two minutes remaining first half. It's a great opportunity to just have a good drive. Don't try to do anything crazy initially. Don't try to throw a bomb. And now they'll probably try to throw one since I said that. <laughs> but have a nice drive. Get some first downs. Get on the upside of the 50. And then think about scoring. Don't think about scoring 20 yards from the 50-yard line. Going 70 yards a long way. This first half is flown by just over an hour. Ooh, we're at the warning off this play. Sterner, with a lot of time, manages to find Whalen. Whalen spins away from tacklers to the 40-yard line. They'll give him eight. That'll bring up second down and two. Stops going here on second down and two. Hall, they fake to Hall, and Sterner finds a man wide open. Anthony Gray with some running room and blockers, and Hall, uh, uh, Gray, excuse me, gets all the way down to the 44 yard line. A well designed play. What are we doing? On the ball, on the ball, hip right, hip right, hip right, jet three. Hip right, jet three, Charlie, 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 Charlie. Oh, Watch you, for the outside center. patterns going to the receivers. Dante Hall on the right side, the short side of the field. He should go to him. From the gun. I told you. That's where it goes when the flag comes in. Looking for Whalen, in fact, it was. Whalen tangled up with Tony George, the safety man. And you heard Sterner say, that's holding. Yeah. <laughs> this this fellow will do the official's jobs for him as well, if you let him. The one... The one thing that I thought they were going to be able to do this week is really build on the great momentum they created in the Berlin game. Holding. Number 37, 36 on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Hasn't Automatic. Hasn't First yet, down. It? It, it hasn't happened, but I also some of the, the, the disorganization or um, lack of continuity that they had the second week of the season against Amsterdam. Right here, Whalen's just doing anything he can. That's more of a basketball play. That's one of my favorites. You go down, you post the guy up in the paint, you tell the quarterback to throw the ball nice and low, and you catch it and get the first down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Of, of course, Tony George thought he was home. Of course. <laughs> Four wide receivers on first down from the 38 yard line. Scotland looking to do something about this 10 point deficit. Sterner with protection. Can't find his man. Looks for Dante Hall. The coverage was there for Todd McMillan. But 
McMillan. Doug Grape was telling us really is the leader of this secondary. They really like him, the coaching staff. Right. He has the best feet as far as a cornerback is concerned. If you're going to play corner in the NFL, you have to have good feet. If you watch here, he's able to work his feet, see Dante break down, and instead of grabbing him from the backside, he reaches around the way they teach him. The way Coach Graber, I know he's excited about that play because he's the DB coach. He's allocated here from the Chicago Bears, Todd McMillan as well. You could be facing him next year. If I, if I hang around, I might be able to play against him on a regular basis. Maybe I'll play another year or two. Yeah, just see what happens. I still can't believe you're retiring. It <laughs> amazes me. Second down and ten from the gun. Sterner with a hard snap and he's in trouble. And that ball is still loose and it's a galaxy ball. Recovered by Chris Cummings. And the foul-ups, such as they are, have all been Frankfurt through the first three weeks of the season, but not tonight. This is exactly the way the game started in the opposite direction for Frankfurt Scotland the first time they played. Scotland ran out to a 24-7 lead. Frankfurt got back into the ball game to lose the game in the fourth quarter. But this is what, after talking to Coach Graber, this is what he wanted to do. Create turnovers and not have penalties. Those are the th uh, three things that had hampered them in their first three losses. And now with a minute left, he might just be tempted to go for the jugular here. First down, over the middle, and it was just tipped away. Jamal Brooks, I think, got a piece of that. Otherwise, Damon Savage was open. Jamal Brooks has to be able to make that play right there. These type of plays are, are difference makers, or um, they can break the game open or break the, the kind of stalish feeling. You know, the one thing you have to understand about Scotland last night, they're playing, they had plane trouble. They didn't get to the hotel until after 12 o'clock. You know, um, tremendous fatigue you know, going into the game, and we were concerned about that as the game started. Deep drop from Bishop. Again, lots of time. Waits, now he unloads, he's got a man wide open, Ricky Hall, touchdown Frankfurt. Now that is how you capitalize on a turnover. This is why playing players like Michael Bishop makes it so tough because they have him defended, he's not going anywhere, they keep him in the pocket where they say they want to, but they drop the coverage on the back end and he's able to get behind the defense. Now, how, I don't know, it has to be a mistake in the defense because there's no way in a two-minute try a receiver should get behind the cornerback. Nate Terry was seven, eight yards off him. The extra point goes in, but Ricky Hall, an 80-yard touchdown against Scotland in week one. Another big play here tonight. And that was a batch of incomplete passes. They trailed at the half, 20-3. Missed tackles, missed cues seem to be the story of the Claymore's first time. Toss a couple of fumbles in there too and, and that was it basically. Uh, crucial mistakes and that and that's what's hurting them. And if we if we take a look at the touchdown from Suma, it's not a bad play because what they're gonna do is drag him across the middle right behind where Dusty Renfro comes in. But when you watch it, he's only got a couple of yards on this. Both safeties converge on him but neither makes the tackle. See they're laying off him a bit too much and then he just has enough speed to get around the court. He makes a nice play, but basically he should have been brought down. And they've been missed, they missed tackles on that play, but throughout the first half we've had an opportunity to see them miss tackles on other occasions. Yeah, and, and maybe that's fatigue, maybe it's just not being you know right for the game, maybe you're out, you're out of your timing, but for whatever reason, they're just not getting it done. And then they get on the offensive end, they've had a few fumbles that we've seen. And fumbles will kill you all the time. You know, Dante Hall's lost the ball a few times during the season. This one, it just gets away from Sterner. Remember, early in the fourth first quarter he hit that hand on someone's helmet following through and you could see him coming off and so maybe his thing you know he just doesn't have the grip that that he should have but basically when you're coming out of the shotgun like that even a high snap quarterback should be able to handle and then there's a big plus for a Frankfurt team when you get the turnover but then you make them pay and remember we said the two keys were first keep Bishop in the pocket and second keep on his receivers and the second one is what Scotland don't do here they do a nice job of keeping Bishop trapped in the pocket, make him throw from a set because he's not that accurate. But when you got a guy like Ricky Hall, see Flick, that's Flick there holding him in. But when you got a guy like Ricky Hall five yards deep, you don't have to be accurate. You just have to loft the ball up there, and that's what he does. I'm sure Gene Dalquist is saying to 
the Claymores at halftime. This team gave up 21 points in the fourth quarter last game. We can still come back in the second half. Yeah, we can make that offense work. That's the first thing they do because they have moved the ball. You mm -hmm. know, it's just the mistakes that have had. But defensively, this is the first time all season, I think, that we could actually say that Scotland isn't really hitting hard and mm -hmm. making the tackles. And, you know, all season long, the defense has been keeping them in games. Today, it's starting to let them down a little bit, which you have to expect is going to happen sooner or later. Chris Carter talked about the guys maybe not getting to the hotel till 12 o'clock last night, fatigue setting in. If fatigue is setting in in the first half, no way it can happen in the second half. Well, you hope that adrenaline gets you going at this point because you see what you've done and you get it together. You know, mm -hmm. really, you shouldn't, fatigue shouldn't be a problem. You get to the hotel at midnight, you still have a night's sleep. You can go out and loosen up and you've mm -hmm. got a game in the afternoon. You know, it's not a good enough excuse. Okay, Mike, thanks for that. In their week one game, the Claymore's led the Galaxy 10 7 at the half as we return to the Vol Stadium. It's 20 to 3 to the Galaxy. It's time now to pick up our commentators, Nick Hauling and Chris Carter. Bishop, play action. Goes downtown again. And he's got a man once again, Ricky Hall, the deep threat. And Hall is tearing this claim of secondary to pieces. Beautiful catch, though. Beautiful catch and a beautiful throw. Great execution. If you look at most of the plays that they've run on first down, they've been predominantly run. So what Coach Painter does, he, 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 he's going to fool me and fool the defense. Uh, the Claymore, he's going to come out and play fake into the line of scrimmage to set up the linebackers and throw the ball downtown. Michael Bishop makes a great throw and a great catch. Another huge play for Ricky Hall, 53 yards. First down to the 25. Denvis Manns checks in. Back on the ground they go. And Manns, the little man who's only 5 foot 8, is managing to get positive yardage against a very demoralized Scotland defensive front and Dwayne Paints the offensive coordinator and a lot of people have questioned some of the things he's been doing this year but uh, the game plan is working today. It is working but the game plans are always good if guys make plays. You know when guys are making plays down the field as you see today I mean everybody on their offense starts mixing the run with the pass and Rich Hall having the big game it makes him look like a, look like a genius. On second down Bishop will look to throw can't find a man still somehow stays on his feet and in the end can't find anybody the coverage was good the coverage was very good what i like about michael bishop in this play he didn't try to force something or force a turnover he realized he had second and long all right no one's open down the field don't make a mistake don't make a mistake and let scotland back into the football game well ricky hall Got an 80 up touchdown in week one. Look at this, three for 114 today. The man from Kansas City. He likes this Scotland defensive secondary, this guy. Third and seven, four wide receivers in. Down he goes this time. Bishop is nailed. They finally make a stand. Keith Miller was in there. Jamal Brooks was with him. Keith Miller makes an excellent play here. Excellent play. football player trying to make a play he's right here in the middle of the defense they're gonna have a cross dog blitz which means the linebackers gonna cross he comes up through the middle of the line of scrimmage and jumps over top of Brian Edwards who's supposed to fill in and block him when he's blitzing that's the type of play the Scotland defenders are gonna have to continue to make if they want to win this football game Ola Kimmer in the Swede attempts a 47 yard field goal he's hit a 46 yard earlier and that one just drifted well, after that missed field goal, both teams swapped punts. Then the Claymore's next drive faltered when they couldn't convert this fake punt. So, we'll pick it up on the Galaxy's next possession. That is Manns. Didn't have much of a chance there either. Right? Just three yards before one running into Bryant Shaw. Well, this game, of course, still in progress. Four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Goodness only knows what they could be talking about. It, it, it's the Scotland offense of the first two weeks we're seeing again tonight. What Sterner wants to do is just keep his composure and still lead the team even in adverse no, no. conditions or adverse no, no. situation. Second down and seven. Bishop will throw. Again, good protection. This time there is a pick. And this time it's going to stand up as well. 
and Central McClellan has come up with the big play defensively that the Claymore has been looking for all night. That could be a spark for them. They needed someone to make a play. But most of the time, most of the time, a quarterback throws an interception. Well, a lot of people, they just think, well, that's a bad throw. Well, right here what you have is you have a receiver that falls down who's had a great game, but he falls down. Ricky Hall falls down and allows Central to come in and get the interception. It's been a long time coming. Have the Claymores left themselves enough time to try and find something? Cooper left. Allen right. Whalen in motion. Anthony Gray in the backfield. They go to Whalen. Whalen is met at the line of scrimmage. What happened from Chris Cummings? There's another man playing injured, by the way. He missed last week with a hamstring. <laughs> He's trying to bounce back from a hamstring. The thing to do is to be injured. Yeah, it, it, because if you're injured, you're going to come back and have a good game. It seems to make you hungry, certainly on this Frankfurt defense. Well, Frankfurt's defense right now, all they have to do is defend the pass. So that makes it very, very easy to play. The defensive lineman can get a good rush, and the defenders can sit back and try to make a play on the ball. If they can't make a play on the ball, they can try to decapitate the receiver. Dante Hall has a sprained right knuckle. They think he will return. They're not sure. Sterner, second down. Rolls away from the pressure. Still can't find anybody. Somehow stays on his feet. Goodness knows how he's done that. And in the end, he manages to complete it to Scott Cooper, who had Chris Cummings wrapped up all around him. And Cooper turns that into a three-yard gain when it could easily have been a 10-yard loss. It really, I mean, he made something out of nothing. This play has disaster written all over it. You know, he, he is a gutsy player, and he's trying to, to work on his leadership skills and also his accuracy. It, it's very difficult as a quarterback when you're down 20 to 3. And, and you're trying to put the burden upon yourself to make a play. Just get first down, get into the red zone, get your touchdown, and you get back into this game. Cooper left, Allen right, Whalen in the slot, Gray backfield. Third down and five, Scotland trying to get something going. They look in the direction of Cooper and got him wide open. And Cooper down at the 22-yard line. He was tackled by Corey Walker with some help from the safety, Corey Gaines. I guess in a pinch, they're going to the old man. I mean, you know, I love that. Well, he's I like seven years back. right here, and this is zone coverage, a cover two, what they call it. And he's going to try to get a jam. He doesn't get a great jam on the receiver. He's going to turn him over to the safety, as you see him coming to the pitcher late. And the quarterback makes a very, very good throw, a flat throw, before the receiver gets smashed by the safety. Scott Cooper with two catches coming into this game. Four tonight, the blitz is coming, but Gray will carry the ball and burst through the hole and will pick up nine yards. They caught him in a blitz. Tony George, the safety man, on the stop. All they've been doing for the last six plays is throwing the football, so it's a great opportunity to run the ball to try to keep him off balance. You don't want to be able to throw the ball every, every play because... The defensive linemen are going to tee off on the quarterback. You want to be able to get your two-dimensional offense back, the ability to be able to run and to pass the football. Looks like last week, Gray is the featured back. Vaughn Sanders out with a recurrence of his ankle problem. Sterner on second and short. Pump fakes. Looks for Cooper in the end zone. Got him. Touchdown, Scotland. And once again, they work Corey Walker. And the Claymores have got some life at last. Now, this is what they should have been doing for the first three quarters. You got Scott Cooper. He's isolated man on man right here. What he's going to do is come off the ball and fake as if he's going to run a quick hitch pattern. A great pump fake by Clint Sterner. Bates the defense to try to go up and try to make an interception. And he's able to slip in behind him for the touchdown. His first of the season, his ninth of his career. And Rob Hart, the Englishman from Southampton, will attempt to tack on the extra point. And the Claymores, inside the final minute of the third quarter, have brought themselves to within 10. Claymores have been able to chip away with a touchdown. They now trail by 20 to 10. It didn't hurt them, but what happened on the fake punt? You know, it was a good play. They set it up nicely, and it looked like it was going to work. Take a look at Dusty Renfro, 44, and watch the way he slides through the line. And the linebacker sees him going through and says, what's going on? And if 
Brad Costello, the punter, had held the ball, make it look like a punt for just a second more, and then just put the ball up in the air. He didn't even have to be accurate as long as it was up high. Dusty Renfro catches the ball, but he's trying to be accurate, and he puts it down on the ground. For me, looking at that play, all it was is the pass just didn't make it. It just the, didn't get. He was wide open there. Yep. You know that uh, you know he just didn't complete the pass to him. But then the Claymores get an interception by Central McCullen. Now, last week when we had a chance to talk to Gene Dahlquist, he talked about the. The defense now starting to create turnovers, which they did last week and again today. And they're doing it this week, which, which helps to make up for blown coverages, and it helps to make up for uh, turnovers that the offense has. And then they get the touchdown on a really nice play, another bit of deception. And watch the first bit of it, because what makes this play work is Clint Cerner's pump fake right there and then throwing. And now when we see the other angle, you're going to see the way Scott Cooper fakes in perfect harmony with Sterner so that when Sterner does the pump fake, that's when Scott turns and goes downfield. Scott's still an easy guy to lift, you know. So here he goes. Now here's Scoops. He's going to go off the line and make it look like an in and see how the cornerback bites on it. Just enough to get behind him and make it look easy. How could you see this igniting the rest of the team? Well, you know, when Scott Cooper gets a touchdown, the guys love love him because he's a native Scott. He's the only one left on the team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they really do. He shows them around Glasgow. He's the guy there. Plus, he's a football player. He's made himself so good over the years. And they've got such respect for how hard he works, how hard he plays. You know, it should pick up the team. Plus, it picks up your team to know that your offense is working the way it's designed to work. And when you run a play like that, which requires precision time, Mm -hmm. It requires everybody to work right, and it then works. It boosts everybody. Okay, let's see if the Claymores can get back in this one. Well, that was all the scoring from the third quarter. We'll pick up the action in the fourth with the Galaxy driving deep in Scotland's territory. Go! White Lane! White Lane! Right. On third and long, the blitz comes. Bishop manages to get Damon Savage inside the 10 to the three-yard line. It worked to perfection. It's great. Anytime you have a receiver like Andy McCullough has tremendous speed, you can send him down the field, and he can clear out a zone. And what you is, he's right here. Andy McCullough is going to clear out the zone, and what he's going to do is break it off into the flat. Great throw by Bishop. And Savage is able to convert a crucial third down. They've spotted the ball at the four-yard line. First and goal, Frankfurt. Go! Go, line! Go, line! High formation. The give is to Spice. Spikes just ran into Chris Ward. <laughs> I don't know if I can give him credit for a tackle on this one. Well, you better. <laughs> Otherwise, Jim Tom Sula will be after you. I mean, Chris Ward, he hits the gap here and makes penetration. <laughs> hey, take that with you. Wow. Well, I guess I got to give him a tackle because he knocked the guy silly. Uh, it, it might be a good idea. Sometimes I guess you don't have to wrap up the way they you go. You going to argue with him? Oh, I, <laughs> yeah, Tom, yeah. No problem. I'm just going to tell him it's his way. A loss of four. Second out and goal. Back on the ground they go. McLeod will pick up three of those lost yards. That'll be third down and goal. Now, this is going to be an interesting call coming up because they have to make a decision. Do we go for the high percentage and go for the field goal with nine minutes in the game with the score 20 to 10 four, to make four, it go right uh, two, uh, uh, two scores right to beat them. Given the problems they've had with the kicking game. Or do they take chance and throw the ball? I believe they're going to throw the ball. Timeout. Scotland. First team timeout. So that will be a 30 second take timeout. timeout. Which means Bishop and Painter can talk it through again. Tom Zool was trying to get a pass rush. Now he wants a sack and a thump. I love to play for a guy like that. Oh, if you can't get fired up by this guy, you're in the wrong business. So the players really respect him as well, don't they? But what they need to do is get a huddle where he can get in there. I mean, yeah. he's a short guy. <laughs> he's looking over everybody's shoulder like, hey, man, what's going on? Now he's asking the players, what the heck did they say in there? <laughs> it would come as no surprise for you to know that Jim Tom Sula is a native of the city of Pittsburgh. My kind of city as well. Pittsburgh, yeah. Great city, great yeah, football I love town, great sports town. I love it. 
big Penguins fan I am as well. I'm pleased about that uh, hockey result. But that's another story. Well, they got a new football stadium. We're going to play yeah. a game there this year, and I'm excited about that. In your retirement year. Third and goal. The Galaxy. Bishop over the middle. Touchdown, Andy McCullough. You have a playmaker. you got to put him in position to make plays. And Michael Bishop's his best friend on the team. This is the, They're hooking up. Just playing football in the end zone, throwing the ball where no one can catch it but in. It's taken him a while to get this fella integrated into this offense. But when he does, watch out because he can light this league up. Stefan Bauer with the extra point. He hasn't missed all year. And we have ourselves a 27 to 10 Galaxy lead. Less than 10 minutes remaining. It's been a long time coming, but the wait is over for Andy McCullough. Both teams have scored touchdowns in the second half, but the Frankfurt Galaxy lead to Claymore is by 17 points, 27-10, Andy McCullough. Andy McCullough is a good receiver. You know, he had a great season in 99. He didn't make it in the NFL when he got back, but he will this time, I would guess. And the reason he gets this touchdown is basically he's left one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and you'll see where he's lined up, match up with the cornerback there. He doesn't get any help from the safeties inside. You see, they're right on the goal line. They come forward, and when McCullough just runs the post, there's nobody there to pick up on inside coverage. And very few cornerbacks in this league would be able to stop McCullough on a straightforward post like that. And you see, there's the safety coming back late. You get a guy like McCullough, former World Bowl MVP, between then and now, why not stick in the NFL? Well, you know, he went back to Arizona. He made the team after his great season in NFL Europe, and he actually got to play, and he started dropping passes. Now, whether he's tired after a long season, whether he thought he'd made it, you mm -hmm. know, whether the jump up got him nervous, I don't know. I talked to him um, in the uh, preseason, and he just said, well, you know, it was the way things went. And then the next year, nobody was really too interested in him. Um, but he's got the talent. Oakland's got him now. He's got speed. He's got size. I think of Marcus Robinson. Sometimes it just takes that extra year of maturity. Okay, well, after that, Andy McCullough touched down. Both teams swapped punts. First, when Gary Tompkins intercepted Clint Stoner. Then Reggie Hunt intercepted Michael Bishop. Following that, both teams swap punts. So let's pick it up on the Claymore's following drive. First down of Scotland. Hornstein hands off to Gray. Gray powers his way for eight more yards. Be a second down. That is the two minute warning. Second down, Hornstein will throw, and it's another low throw in the direction of Corey Allen, and uh, you can see that Hornstein is not quite getting sharp, that's a couple of balls that have uh, taken a one hop to the receiver. Right, but give him an opportunity to throw exactly. the ball. Yeah, give exactly. Him, give him an opportunity to, to gain some confidence from his peers, an opportunity to generate some first downs. No, we're not going to win the game, but it could go a long way in a 10-game season as far as having a quarterback who has some experience. So third and a couple, Steve Hutchinson, the Londoner, is in the backfield. Stephen Fontana is the motion man. They give to Hutchinson, and Hutchinson will pick his way for a first down. And this is quite a story, Chris. This man, Stephen Hutchinson, played for the London Monarchs back in 1995. He was released after that. He's kept playing amateur football throughout Europe. He decided this year, I'm going to give it another go. He impressed the coaches enough, and at the age of 29, he's come back, and he's made the team, and now he's seen some playing time. There's so many national players who have great stories like him. And I mean, he just loves they, the game. He's they not, love the game, he's not and making they want money. the opportunity to play. Yeah, that's all he's doing it for, the love of the game. First down. Ornstein will throw. 
And this time he does find Corey Allen, and Allen makes his first catch in Claymore's colours. Todd McMillan had the coverage, but Millen has had a good night despite that 15-yard completion, and that will certainly give Ornstein a lot of confidence. This fellow looks like he could be a prospect, Chris. He really could. He really could. He needs to get a lot of reps, work on his man-to-man -man end zone coverage, build to mix up the two. I mean, he's small, slender built, so he has to work on trying to be physical or keep his body in a position where he can make plays. Another completion as the clock continues to run. Allen once again we get down to the last 40 seconds and McMillan actually shaken up on that play as well. Yeah, timeout. An injury timeout Frankfurt. for Frankfurt. Injury timeout. That's their second team timeout. Scottish Claymores with a second down and three with Gus Ornstein at the controls. Ornstein is hit as he throws. He's found Whalen. Whalen will get inside the five and possibly in to the end zone. No, just short, just down on the one yard line. And we have a flag. Wouldn't you believe that? But I feel good for Gus Ornstein. He gets an opportunity to get in there. Even if they call it back, he feels that he's developing confidence of his teammates, but also he's able to put himself in a position. Number 72, an eligible player downfield, five yard penalty, repeat, second down. As Ornstein steps up, the flag's flying. Ornstein with the completion, another flag. They're doing their best to uh, damage Ornstein's number. Time out. Scotland, second team timeout. It will be a 30 second timeout. Uh, I think Doug Graver is about to get his first bath, or his first shower, should we say. Michael Bishop's in the thick of it. Oh, boy. <laughs> they almost knocked him out. <laughs> we were saying as well, Doug Graver is about as nice a guy as you could meet. He really no one, is. No one would begrudge him that. And you'd like to see good things happen to him. Ornstein overthrows Fontana. He's a man who will spend time with you, whether you're a player, whether you're a, a guy calling the game, whether you're a fan, he just loves the game, loves teaching the game, which is what makes him a good coach. And this win, long overdue, Dwayne Payne is about to get one. Oh, where, where's he running to? <laughs> yeah. Where's he running? He's off into corner. <laughs> <of wins. laughs> And there's a guy that's had some criticism as well, but uh, those critics have been silenced tonight. It really, is, and it also has some differences with the players as far as philosophy, yeah. and sometimes that happens when you lose. I think it's nice to see. It's a great deal of respect. He's been a good coach for a long period of time, and he believes in the system. His system has worked for a number of different coaches and different offenses, and he believes it can work here in the NFL Europe. Ornstein looks end zone. Got a man. Touchdown, Scotland. Whalen. With seven seconds left and Ornstein will celebrate that because he's had to wait and watch as Sterner has played nearly four full games and he's come on and he's shown he can throw touchdowns in this league as well. This is what you want to see. You want to put the back up in there to give him an opportunity. It doesn't matter there's only five seconds to go when they're down by left. It doesn't matter. Next time he goes into the game, he'll have some type of confidence that he can lead this offense down for a score. And here's Rob Hart, the barefoot kicker from Southampton in England. Southampton. There we go. I had to oh, say that. Yeah, can you give me a trial for that soccer team they have there? You can make that soccer team the way they're playing. Oh, <laughs> Hart. Real football. Yeah, that's right. With the extra point. It's a 10-point ball game with five seconds left. Well, that was the ball game. Scotland went for the onside kick to try to get back possession, but it did not work. And the game finished with Frankfurt running out the clock by taking a knee 27-17 to the Galaxy. Great fire. Play more. Yes, yeah. You know, you have a game where Fra Frankfurt finally gets on the board with the win, but we take a look at the Claymores. 0-2 on the road, 2-0 at home. They seem to keep their focus a little better 
when they're in Glasgow. Not surprising. And, you know, the Amsterdam game was really rough for them on the road because of the communications problems and whatever. You know, and they played better here at times, but they made mistakes they didn't make it at, against Amsterdam. You know, they had, they had mental letdowns or physical letdowns that they didn't have in that game. And that really was the difference. Um, Dante Hall getting hurt didn't help them any. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a few fumbles, a few missed tackles, a few missed assignments, and that, that was basically the game. And, and remember, Frankfurt was due. Okay, thanks for that, Mike. Scotland at Frankfurt was one of three NFL Europe games that took place today. Perhaps the biggest game was the first that kicked off undefeated Barcelona, hosting second place Amsterdam for the top spot in the standing. The Dragons bidding for their first 4-0 start since 1991. Commentators Brad Sham and Irving Fryer. Second and five. Little play action fake. All day to find Simmons at the 20. Touchdown, Barcelona. Go, go, go. It's a short three, third and two. Easy, 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 easy. Here we go, here we go. 80, 180. Sunday, Sunday. Simmons the target. One man to beat. Two touchdowns for Tony Simmons. Cut. Play action. Touchdown to O'Connor. And the game is on. It is second down. Green. Nice block from Martos. Touchdown, Barcelona. This is the first and goal. That's a touchdown to Coleman. Easy, easy, easy. 19, 19. Sunday, Sunday. Hunt. There's your option to Green. First down. Two touchdown runs today for Mike Green. The ball is spotted at the 17, so this is a 27-yard try. LaFleur, the holder. The kick is good. Congratulations to the Dragons, who now lead that all-time series 7-6. Now, in our other game today took place in the German capital. The Thunder hosted the current champion, Ryan Fire. Both teams are 1-2, and two with Ryan looking to end a two-game losing streak. Commentators, Dave Craig and Paul Kennedy. Good for Manny. Manfred Bergsmuller has just established the all-time NFL Europe scoring record. With that field goal, a former German soccer star, now with more points than any man that has ever played on this side of the Atlantic. 47-yard field goal of Scott Bentley out of Florida State. By way, the Redskins can knock it home. Got a low snap, but a good spot. It has the distance, and it is good to tie this game. So the attempt here out of Brian Mormon's hold by Axel Kruse. German soccer star, a 25-yard field goal, which is good. And with eight seconds remaining, officially in our first half, Berlin goes in front, 6-3. Now the Seahawk, Rodney Phillips, behind Kim Kuchi, a blocking back. He follows him in there and is stood up, but reaches the football over the plane of the goal line and is given the touchdown. And Ryan is irate. Forward progress appeared to have been stopped, but it's the score. Third down. Stand ball, thinking in zone. Throws that way, juggled, caught, touchdown, Ryan. On third down. Win with time, throws, touchdown. and Gwen, the top receiver in a mod 
Cruza. 28. And a low snap. And the kick is good. For the first time this season. Cruza. It's a victory ride. And the score swells. 23 to 10 for Berlin. He's going to be coming around to his left after he takes the ball to the right. Oh, continues around the right. Carmazzi throws into the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Carmazzi comes in. Guns. Adam Newman makes the catch. Now was the first weekend of the season where all the home teams won. But join us next Sunday, 20th of May, for our second live play more games. 3 o'clock is the time. Sky Sports 2 is the place. The Bravehearts Travel Inducer Tour to take on the fire. That is a convenient. You can catch the repeat at 1 a.m. later that day. Also on Sky Sports 2 on Monday the 21st, 12.30 p.m. Sky Sports 3. He's Mike Carlson. I'm Kevin Cato, and we'll see you next time.